So were you a pilot during 9-11? Yes. Okay, and did you notice any change from before 9-11 to after? Um, as far as um, security? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, so before 9-11, um, the security measures were certainly much more relaxed uh, than they have been since 9-11. An example of that would be, um, it used to be that the door that separates the flight deck from the main cabin, um, that door could be left open if, uh, if the one police open, we could leave it open. And uh, one of the changes that was made having 9-11 is that uh, we could no longer do that and we had to you know, keep the door, we still have to keep the door locked whenever, uh, whenever we're, uh, we're flying. And then um, whenever we need to come out to, uh, to use the lavatory uh, during flight, the flight attendants actually have to come up to the front of the cabin and they have to set up their, uh, their beverage cart to block the lavatory from the main aisle of the cabin so that you know, somebody couldn't you know, try to get into the flight deck um, you know, while we're opening the door to get out to use the lavatory. So that was one of the major changes. Okay. Um, Thank you. Um, did you have uh, did you have to go through any extra training bef like after 9/11 happened? Yes, yes, I did. Um, so the the philosophy prior to 9/11 is that if there's any sort of um, security issue on board the airplane, you know, during flight, um, typically um, prior to 9/11. Um, we were taught to just, um, you know, comply with whatever it was that the person who was, you know, trying to breach the flight deck would do, and um, and then, uh, you know, as a result, you know, flights landed safely uh, as long as there was no, you know, extreme opposition to whatever it was that the person wanted to do. Since 9/11, that philosophy has changed, and we're taught now to take any measures necessary to, to protect the flight deck uh, security. Okay. So uh, it's, it's no longer a passive philosophy. It's now an active philosophy to prevent you know, any, uh, any sort of security breach. Okay. And do you, I don't know if you know this, but did TSA have to go through any, through any extra training or any classes afterwards? Yes. Yes, they did. Uh, as a matter of fact, my brother-in-law uh, was a trainer for the TSA shortly after 9-11. And, uh, yeah, there, there's a lot more training that the TSA employees had to go through to, you know, to get trained in the new philosophy. And much, they now have much stricter security measures for people that are going through the security checkpoints at the airports. Okay. Um, did it affect you personally or, like, your job? Um, you know, fortunately, it did not. Um, what happened was, so when 9-11 happened, I was fairly new to the company that I was working for. And the company was, was uh, initially planning on laying off um, some pilots uh, at that time. And the pilot group of the company uh, where I worked, uh, they all stepped up and offered to take a, um, take a pay cut to keep uh, guys like me from getting laid off. So um, fortunately, I was able to keep my job. I do have a lot of friends, though, that did lose their jobs as a result of 9-11. Okay. So has there been a difference between, like, flying within the country or, like, flying internationally? Uh, can you say it again, please? Is there any, like, difference or any more security measures that you have to go through if you were, like, if you were flying within the country versus flying internationally? No. No, it's, um, it, it, it's the same. Okay. What is the biggest change, like, in your job after 9-11? I'm sorry, what was your question? What is the biggest change in your job after 9-11? Um, the biggest change would be um, uh, some of the security measures that are now in place since 9-11. So, for example, when I show 
up to the airport to go to work. Um, it used to be that there were different um, checkpoints that we could go through where we didn't have to get uh, screened uh, before, you know, getting through the sterile area is mm -hmm. what they call it, and not to the airplane. And since 9-11, um, all crew members, um, as well as passengers, have to go through um, the same security checkpoints that passengers do. Okay, okay. Um, do you think 9-11 affected people's thoughts on flying? Like if we, like our thoughts? Yeah, absolutely, yep, absolutely. So um, people are more, um, more willing to, uh, or, or less willing, I should say, to um, just, you know, stay in their seats on the airplane and do nothing if there's a security problem in the airplane. Now, if there's somebody that, you know, tries to tries to get to the flight deck, people will, you know, will do something about it. They'll, they'll get up and, and do whatever it takes to, to stop somebody from, you know, trying to affect the safety of the flight. Whereas prior to 9-11, people would just, you know, comply with the, the demands of, of the person that was, you know, trying to get into the flight deck. Okay. Um... Do you think there was more of a change for pilots or the TSA agents? Uh, I would say for the uh, for the TSA. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So some of the some of the security measures um, that pilots and flight attendants have to go through have have been relaxed a little bit um, since you know since the immediate time right after 9/11. Um, but as far as the TSA goes. Um, yeah, I would say that they have been more affected because they have to um, be a lot more, uh, exercise a lot more scrutiny in screening passengers before they let them into the sterile area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, do you think the schooling would be harder now or like then to become a pilot? Uh, I'm sorry, can you say it again, please? Do you think uh, the schooling would be harder now or then to become a pilot? Because, like after 9/11, or um, I would say the schooling uh, is is about the same as it was prior to 9/11. Okay.